Welcome to Mikon's hardware. The LJ2011 version 3 so-called X99 platform is going down and down in price. And now the CPU which costed more than 100 years not long ago cost about 25 years plus a VAT. I am talking about Xeon E52697V3 and for 25 years we are getting a 14-core CPU with the 28 threads with maximum turbo frequency of 3.5 GHz and what's more important we are getting 35 MB of cache and 135 Watt TDP limitation. With the Turbo Boost Unlock implemented, all CPU cores will be running at 3.5 GHz frequency. Of course, when the TDP limit is reached, the CPU will downclock itself to 3.4-3.3 GHz, but still it is pretty good for the old Xeon, especially under gaming conditions, when all CPU cores are not going to be 100% utilized. Xeon E52697 V3 basic computer will cost you a little less than the same computer based on Core i3-12100. And that's why in this video I'm going to do head-to-head -head comparison between these two CPUs in 20 different games. I have also tested 5 extra online games, but in this video I'm going to focus on these 20 games that have built-in gaming benchmarks. The 5 extra online games are left for another video. So for this test I have used my standard test bench, yet I need to mention that I'm using AMD RX 7900 XT graphics card, which is way too overpowered for these two CPUs. I have also enabled resizable bar or smart access memory for both of the CPUs and I have tested both of the CPUs with 32 gigs of memory. Now, before I go into the test results, let me tell you an interesting fact about Sweden. In Sweden, when you're driving on highway and someone wants to join the highway, you are obliged to make sure that this joining one is safe to join and is able to join as quick as possible and as safe as possible. If you are the one who is riding on the highway and going stride, if you're driving into someone who is trying to join the highway, you will be as responsible for this crash as the one who tried to join. In Sweden, in traffic, we put the safety as the topmost priority, and thus I would suggest you to follow this practice even outside of Sweden. First of all, let's take a quick look at the Cinebench R23 performance to understand what is the raw capability of these two CPUs and how they compare to each other. When using just one CPU core or running the benchmark in single core mode, we have 830 points for Xeon E5 and 1620 points for Core i3. So you can see that the single core performance with Core i3 is almost double as much compared to the Xeon E5. When using all CPU cores, Xeon E5 scores about 10,050 points and Core i3 scores about 8,450 points. Even though Xeon E5 has 14 cores and Core i3 has only 4 cores. Yes, it's worth mentioning again that I have disabled hyperthreading with the Xeon E5 because when we have 14 physical cores, enabling hyperthreading makes no sense for gaming. But let's start with Far Cry 6. This is probably one of the worst case scenarios for Xeon E5 because Far Cry 6 uses only 1.5 CPU cores and unsurprisingly Xeon E5 loses to Core i3 by almost 30%. Xeon E5 is only capable of 7296 FPS compared to Core i3 which is able to render 9123 FPS. The next game on my list is Gears 5, and here Xeon E5 is still slower than Core i3. The gap in this case is about 25%. Looking at the FPS numbers, Xeon E5 is able to deliver 7033 FPS, while Core i3 is good for 8859 FPS. Moving to Forza Horizon 4, here Xeon E5 is capable of 169-185 FPS, while Core i3 is able to deliver 186-222 FPS. The gap in this case is about 20%, and even though Core i3 is faster, I would still say that it is a very good result for Xeon E5, because both of the CPUs are able to render at least 160 FPS on a minimum. Similar result we can see in Rainbow Six Extraction. Here we have 251-310 FPS with a Xeon CPU and 254-344 FPS with Core i3. 
Even though the gap is still about 10%, both of the CPUs are able to render at least 250 FPS, and on average, both of them are delivering more than 300 FPS. Much more CPU demanding game is Horizon Zero Dawn, and even though it is able to utilize multiple CPU cores, it still relies on the single core performance. With the Xeon i5 we have only 100-250 FPS, but with i3 we have slightly better result, 113-164 FPS. So the gap is yet again 10%, but at the same time we see that Core i3 is loaded up to 100%, while Xeon i5 2697v3 stays about 70-80% of utilization. This means that if you have any source of background task that requires CPU resources, their performance will degrade with their i3 CPU, but it will stay the same with the Xeon e5 CPU. The pre last tested game is Borderlands 3, and here Xeon i5 is able to deliver a smoother, better experience, even though Core i3 on average is slightly faster. With the Xeon i5 we have 103-171 FPS, and with Core i3 we have 87-176 FPS. In some cases, during the difficult scenes in the benchmark run, Core i3 dips below 90 FPS mark, while Xeon i5 stays above 100 FPS at all times. These little hiccups with FPS drops when using Core i3 CPU might be annoying. At the same time, Xeon i5 is able to deliver a smoother, better experience with at least 100 FPS at all times. The last game I'm going to tell you about is Watch Dogs Legion, and this game is very CPU demanding, and it's probably one of those unique cases where multi-core Xeon E5 is able to beat modern core i3. Xeon E5 delivers 7806 FPS compared to just 6792 FPS with the core i3. Thus we have 15% gap in favor of Xeon E5. Most likely in this case, quad-channel memory and the large cache capacity of Xeon E5 helps it take this win. Finally, on average, across 20 tested games, we have the following results. Xeon E5 2697v3 scores 109-181 FPS while Core i3-12100 delivers 115-195 FPS. All in all, Core i3 is only 6-8% faster than Xeon i5-2697v3 when it comes to these 20 tested games. Still, it is worth mentioning that even though Xeon i5 is almost catching up with the Core i3, it consumes significantly more power. For example, when running my Assassin's Creed Valhalla benchmark with almost identical results for both of the CPUs, my system equipped with the Xeon i5 CPU consumed almost 100 watts extra compared to the Core i3 system. Xeon i5 system consumes 475 watts, while Core i3 system consumes about 380 watts. Here it's important to mention that I am measuring entire system power consumption and not just the CPU power consumption. For the conclusion, it's really hard to make a single statement, because some people will advocate for Xeon i5 and others will advocate for Core i3. In my opinion, the price difference between these two options is not justified to go with the old x99 Xeon e5 route. With Core i3, you are getting modern platform with a much stronger single-core performance, and what's more important, you are getting the upgrade path and energy efficiency. In the future, you might be able to install i5-12400, 13400, or maybe even 14400 CPU. While with the Xeon e5, you have almost the best CPU possible for this platform, so you have no upgrade possibilities, at least not something meaningful. And the Chinese shady x99 motherboards are also an issue. Yes, Chinese manufacturers are also producing LGA1700 motherboards, which are also cost-efficient, 
but in this case these motherboards are actually produced under Intel's licensing and under Intel's guidance. That's why the quality is significantly better compared to the X99 counterparts. The X99 motherboards, especially the ones which are using uh, the desktop chipsets such as B85 and Q87, are produced by the Chinese factories on their own. Intel does not allow such configurations, Intel does not provide any support, and Intel does not license such sales. That's why the motherboard layout might be totally random, the BIOS is so bad, and the overall product might be pretty problematic. And with this I have to say, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope my results and my opinion will help you make your decision and you will buy the right product for yourself, but for now, I hope to see you in the next video and goodbye!